Yeah. It's so Simon Phoenix, Wesley Snipes, is an old fashioned 90s hardened criminal and that doesn't exist anymore. So we're going to need an old fashioned cop. Nope. You never need an old fashioned anything. No, <laughs> that is never. That's never the only one man can stop. Nope. It's never that. It's never one man. It's never old fashioned. Mm -mm. Nope. None of that. Unless you are ordering an old fashioned, you never need an old fashioned. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except not really. Sometimes we apparently watch movies that aren't religious or awful because Heath only has the one celebrity impression. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, despite how I just introduced him. Heath, then, right? Heath, welcome back. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's This is so good, bad. This is like the goodest, good, bad, good, bad. Yeah. Loved it. So good, bad, in fact, that it could be described as good, good. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah. Good to know. And <laughs> tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Demolition Man. It's the story of a futuristic paradise of peace and harmony in 2032. No guns, no murder, no disease. Everybody's happy and healthy. And... Libertarians live underground in a sewer. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. I love it. But then a white cop from the 90s ruins the whole thing. Yeah, yep. they had a habit of doing that. Otherwise, I loved it. And Eli, how bad was this movie? I'm going to say. Well, if you love the Joe Rogan podcast, but he's not explicitly racist enough for you, <laughs> you will love this movie. I loved this movie. This is like learning your morning cartoons were North Korean propaganda films, the movie. Yeah, I loved it too, but I did not remember from, you know, age 11 or 12, whatever it was, that it was a really strong Atlas Shrugged message throughout. I, I didn't catch that part when I was 12. So, I, you know, as, as I think I've made clear, I'm going to be defending this film against Heath and Eli's unwarranted <laughs> attacks throughout, <laughs> with the exception of Wesley Snipes' Chinese noises, that were quite problematic. That was weird. Dang, he got it. He beat us to it. With the exception of that, uh, I'm dying to know what part of this movie Eli's going to pretend was racist. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Well, the paradise was ruined by a, a black guy from 1996. And then the white savior cop from 1996 <laughs> fixes the whole thing. It, it's got a few problematic moments, but I, it, I loved it. I loved it at the time. I'm going to go for best worst. I'm going to go with Best, best prophecy. Ooh. This entire movie is a prophecy. It, it nailed, it's like the Neil Stevenson of movies. It got everything right. It really did. Everything happened. I have so many notes about exactly that, about like, wow, they nailed that one too, huh? <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst effort and a Schwarzeneggerian one liner. That is the subplot of this fucking movie is Sylvester Stallone desperately trying to have an I'll be back or an I let him go kind of moment and failing so hard. At one point, Wesley Snipes says, I'll see you in hell. And Sly Stallone says, not. Yep. I, sh I swear. There was a God, not. That's mm -hmm. the lie. There was a not. I had to go back and check it on the fucking subtitles. But yes, that's the lie. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember the, the Schwarzenegger you know, reference either. I just remember they talked about him. I don't remember a line from his either. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's <laughs> a few times in this movie where it seems like Sly Stallone is being surprised with opportunities for one liners. Yeah. Right. It's like, Oh, you're dangling me over a pit. Uh, don't get put down. <laughs> Fuck. <God. laughs> I got to start reading the script. Did I make cliffhanger <laughs> yet? Uh, I'm going to go with best worst dystopia. Mm hmm. The thing that is most disappointing and scary about this movie, besides the six seconds that Dennis Leary is allowed to talk and remind me that we once allowed Dennis Leary it's to the talk. Fucking worst. <laughs> is what the 1990s were afraid of. Yeah. We'll get to it. 
they get confused by themselves so many times. By the way, was Dennis Leary funny? Never. Was he funny then? Never once. His entire bit was talking really fast and giving out lists and making people think there must have been something funny in there that they missed at some point. That was all he ever did. <sighs> I loved Dennis Leary. I think I thought he was funny too. I yeah. never see he was he was like just like fucking Adam Sandler. Everybody was laughing at this shit. I'm going, but he never even told a fucking joke. <laughs> This was almost my best worst. If this podcast has a through line, it is the terrifying journey of Noah's life where we have been able, me and Heath have been able to look back and be like, oh, no, I fucking loved that thing. I thought it was great. And poor nine year old Noah was like, that seems pretty homophobic to me, guys. Are you sure? Are you sure? I would love to say that it was because it was homophobic that I didn't like it, but it was just not fucking funny. Mm. Not that homophobia is funny. Okay, I'm going to dive and dig myself into a fucking No, hole. but Adam Sandler, he changes the volume of his voice at random. <laughs> Just, sometimes it's all of a sudden loud. That's, isn't that funny? That's a joke, right? But, yeah. Heath, I kind of feel like you're shitting on your own plate there. Man. <laughs> let's, let's not. <laughs> all right, all right. All of a sudden loud is not a trick out of not our bags. I'm just saying, <laughs> let's find a much less glass house to throw He's somewhere. one of my major influences. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Artistically. All right. Well, obviously, we've got to go over the company statement of purpose one more time. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the let me quote from the critic consensus on Rotten Tomatoes here. Better than average sci fi shoot 'em up. That is Demolition Man. So that's the lights, the candles. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's the last of the Christmas stuff. All right. Well, uh, there you go. And of course, here you go. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a seasonal affective disorder, cheap chocolates, and unexpectedly bad weather. It's for the next three months. They're free, just like you get three months free at Mint Mobile. Oh, what's Mint Mobile? Okay, come on, Heath. Totally cheating. No, Heath. no, I'm not cheating. I am also Christmas shopping. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, really? For what? I, it's for jing, jingle bells. Oh, anyway, jingle bells. anyway, what's Mint Mobile? For my reindeer. You don't have That's to try to recover it, man. You stall it, it's, and you don't have to. From Blitzen needs it. They're the best deal in wireless. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans that start at just $15 a month. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you get another three months for free. So we're doing the same thing here at Big Christmas Store. When you buy your Christmas stuff, you get January, February, and March for free. Okay, but with Mint Mobile, all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Do your Christmas decorations do that? Uh, no, I guess they don't. Ha! Nailed it. Totally in the ad. Once again, for a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. Thanks, I guess. You know, Blitzen actually has a pretty serious Coke problem. Really? I, I Honestly, I thought that would be Rudolph. Nope. Blitzen. And so I say to her, consent, what does that mean? You want to get paid? And did she? That's the thing. She wouldn't say. She just uh, maced me. Huh. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I'm late for our big pitch meeting uh, for the next Sly Stallone movie. I just, I'm sorry. I had the worst morning. Uh, oh, yeah? What happened? I, so I'm, I'm in a traffic light, and there's this black guy in front of me. I hate that. Dave, you're supposed oh. to wait until I said what he was doing. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry. No, anyway, go ahead. so there's this black guy in front of me and he's listening to his music super loud in the car right in front of me. Oh, I, I hate was, that. I hate there. right. That that was, sorry, I, and, and I just thought to myself, like, you know what? That's what the city is becoming. Right. It's just overrun by black guys with loud music. And the cops in this town are too much a bunch of pussies to do anything about it. Yeah, yes, that is correct. It is 1993 and cops are way too easy on people of color right now. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Especially here in L.A. Oh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, what, what should this movie be about? Wait a second, guys. It's so obvious. Yeah. We should do a bunch of cocaine. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Love it. Yep. Yes. Call my guy. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on L.A. and 1996, which looks a lot like L.A. in 1992. <laughs> yeah, this was made moments after the L.A. riots and the Rodney King. Yeah. Moments. Yeah. This pro 
1990s L.A. police movie. Ooh. I love to this silly ass uh, like because they've got to like stick in the exposition. This was made in 93, right? So it's not like 96 was the distant future. And the pilot's like, you remember back when they were still landing commercial airlines in this city? And it's like in your own movie, that's two fucking years ago, Max. Right? You, do you remember <laughs> the year before last? Yeah, man. We all remember. I say, boy, do you remember <laughs> the Hepridge <laughs> Farm remember? <laughs> also, I just want to point out that they're being shot at by a seven-year-old making gun sound effects with his mouth. Yes. I don't know when Foley evolved between 1992 and 1999 or whatever, but yeah, they got better gun sound effects in the last few years. We were still in the PQ PQ days for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were people shooting laser guns in this moment or like plasma cannons? What was happening? <laughs> it looked like Star Wars. They were shooting patoo, patoo guns. Yeah. This is 1996 is the setting of, the, of this moment in the movie. Yeah. yeah. And w so we meet Sly Stallone. He's on this police helicopter going to get Simon Phoenix. And you know he's the bad guy because Sly does the whole like Bond, James Bond formulation with his name. It's like, we're going after Phoenix. Simon Phoenix. Yeah, and he yells his name when he jumps out of the helicopter, so you know it's personal. <laughs> okay, this method of exiting a helicopter does not seem optimal to me. None of it. No, nope. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Strategically speaking, I have a lot of questions. Right, first of all, you don't, like, scream, I'm sure gonna catch you by surprise on your way down, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. He also appears to be on a bungee? That's... <laughs> so he was not a great way to reach a surface i feel like <laughs> but here's the thing he wasn't it just stopped when he got to the end <laughs> right which would be the same as just jumping out of the helicopter <laughs> <laughs> well to be fair Sly alone is immune to bungee as he oh <laughs> there you <laughs> <laughs> um, as evidenced by his face, elasticity does not work around I Sly see. Stallone. Okay, no, that makes perfect no, it sense. Not. <laughs> it's his mutant power. And a bunch of henchmen are just like, hey, there's a cop screaming the name of our boss. We shoot him now, right? We just we'll shoot him because he's right there. Let, I hear let him it play yelling out. at us. Let it play out. <laughs> hey, man, are you on a bungee cord? <laughs> wow, you're really bad at this. We're going to shoot you right now, hanging on that cord. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, but he shoots all of them instead. Then he gets down where, like, he goes downstairs to where Wesley Snipes is. Yeah. And he's got a very quick monologue he has to give, here, right? <laughs> Stallone's acting style, I would describe it as speed run of a video game <laughs> as acting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's this accurate. is this glorious period of movie history where Sly Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger were the biggest movie stars in the world. And nobody knew why and nobody could stop it. It was a runaway train. They hated it. We hated it. Everyone in ha everyone hated it. No one was on board except for me watching ABC when I was sick as a 15 year old 10 years later. But like nobody was on board and somehow we were all just going through the bases. Uh, letting this train run out of. Loved it. <laughs> so yeah so but while he's given his monologue he reveals that Sly Stallone is standing right in a big puddle of gasoline that's not I'm, none of this is how gasoline no, works no you know. he holds the fucking blowtorch like an inch over it like ooh don't make me dip this <laughs> into the gasoline dude that's not okay he does the thing that actually would have been a problem right. that's really interesting <laughs> yeah he'd be in a cloud of flames at this moment yeah yeah but then he actually lights it and, and everybody's just like, oh, we better move away from that. And then they just very gently move away from the small <laughs> pool of gasoline. It's the fucking best. That, hey, that trope, I wish that had stayed in movies. Just like, if I drop this dead switch, I'll catch it. Yeah. Oh, right. That's, that's it. Fuck. <laughs> Can we talk about what he's wearing at this moment sure. as well? Sure. His, yes. his, his wardrobe throughout this film deserves a mention. Sure. What is going on? He is dressed like what your racist grandma describes Dennis Rodman as wearing. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's amazing because Dennis Rodman actually based his haircut on this haircut yeah. that Wesley mm -hmm. Snipes has in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at some point they were like, what do bad guys wear in the distant future? You know, like three years from now. Right. Uh -huh. And somebody was like, leather clown stuff leather yep. clown stuff exactly okay yeah. now what if you had to make an outfit for the road warrior out of fanny packs all right i'm on it <laughs> we'll do that 
hammer pants biker on the so hammer pants below clown hammer and then top half is biker <laughs> got it like that yeah so yeah but so they have their little fight eventually slide knocks him out and he has to like fireman carry him out of the building and the building explodes because fuck yeah the building explodes oh uh, and it is this my friends this is the 90s they just did that they just blew up that was a school <laughs> that was, they just blew up a school for this movie and kids showed up the next day and they're like, ah, I guess we're off. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they really blew up a, a building for this one. That's an entire chapter of Sid Field in the 1990s edition. It's just like, boom. yeah, there you go. <laughs> How do you spell that? All right. <laughs> so now it, it's post explosion. And of course, the captain is chew and sly out for being such a damn maverick. Uh, and. It's weird sometimes to look back at these movies and these tropes because you wonder if the people making the tropes knew, right? It was like, ah, damn it, George, you, you know, I'm the chief and you're the road cop. All right, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but doesn't that say everything about the 90s that you need to know? The universal hero in our movies was police officer who doesn't give no shit about your civil liberties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when cops getting in trouble was a possible plot for a movie or even a conceivable reality? Right. That was fun. Yeah, because they're like, oh, you know, 30 people got killed when you blew up that building. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if they're going to convict on that. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids made him feel danger. He, he felt danger. He felt danger. Yeah. To, yeah. To be fair. If this movie was made now, they're just flash cut to them planting guns on all the kids in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> So, the kids were trying guns. to take away my C4. Right. I felt threatened. <laughs> so, yeah, but so that's the inciting incident. He blew up the building and it turns out there were <laughs> hostages in the building and they all died. So he's going to jail right along with Wesley Snipes. Fuck yeah, he is. And then, of course, we have to get the obligatory Sly's ass scene. So this is where he's cryogenically frozen. I feel like that he, that's got to be a contract thing like Vin Diesel not losing a fight. Sure. It's yep. in every single yep. one. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, not the more recent ones. At a certain point, he let yeah. that go for the writer. I feel like the ass is like behind the knees at this point. Yeah, so maybe when they he let it go, they needed a wide range lens for it, and he was like, "Okay, you don't have to yeah, show it anymore." Think about it. If it's it. moving downwards at the same speed as his face, it's by its ankles. Maybe it's rough. <laughs> that, yeah, right. This is also the scene where I began to suspect that maybe Sly Stallone didn't have a script because the warden guy he's doing the like. Sylvester Stallone of the 477th Precinct, you are found. And he's just roasting him the entire time. Like, I'm trying to get through a monologue on D&D &D fucking minus. He's just like, skip it. Shut up. Don't <laughs> care. Nope. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, but yeah, but they put him in the little cryogenic chamber, which is much smaller than him, which seems unnecessary. <laughs> Yep. the best because at one point they put him in this thing and he's naked for no reason because you like have to see his gonna, ass it's in the contract you know, oh contract sure yep. but then he, he has to like <laughs> they start closing the top and they're like you duck down you have to duck down you have to, it's and not, we made it smaller we made it smaller than a person that's the worst part when they make you hunch down into your own cryo goo chamber yeah. to, like, I would not crawl into the corner like <laughs> right, fucking right. Gollum I would just stand there and it would just bounce off of me over and over again <laughs> like this stand is clear of the closing doors man god <laughs> damn it you're being a, don't do this you're being a we're dick. all gonna be late now <laughs> He turns next to him. Vern Troyer's in a in a tank like six times his size. I I think they got switched. I don't want to be you know that I guy. Think I think they got switched. <laughs> so yeah, and just as I'm thinking to myself, man, I hope if I'm ever frozen for seventy years, I won't be making a stupid screamy face at that exact moment. He gets frozen making a stupid screamy. Oh, it's face the and a stupid pose too. He's like, I'm doing a weird pose with my legs. I don't know what time out. I crossed my leg. <laughs> Fuck, it's weird. I'm sitting like like a Victorian <laughs> debutante. I don't understand what happened. <laughs> well, and then the the credits finish. They're done with this scene, but there's still credits to go. So the credits finish with us doing all these weird 3D slow mo pans of Sly's abs and his glutes and stuff. Yeah. Also, the cryogenic technology here. Um, apparently, between 1993 and the distant future of 96 they invented ice nine balls yes. yep ice nine balls that they Wands. keep in giant cryogenic tampons mm -hmm. why is it in that also why is it in a giant doesn't 
<laughs> two <laughs> well, you couldn't use a pad, right? You'd have to lower the goop. That, that would be dumb. No. That'd be silly. Yeah. You're right. So. Cup's better for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we pop forward in time to 2032, the distant... Sandra Bullock! Future. Sandra Bullock. Oh, um, yeah, Sandra Bullock. She is so <laughs> fucking cute. She still is, but like, I just, I'm, every time she shows up on screen, I'm just like, she's so cute. She's delightful. Yeah. She's a, a delight. Sandra Bullock appears, appears to know that she is Sandra Bullock and just has to get through this part of her life. Like if Sandra Bullock came out tomorrow and was like, hey, sorry, everyone, I'm a mentat. I've actually always been able to see all of time and space. And so it was really hard for me to do Demolition Man, just knowing that like my whole career was ahead of me. Also, I don't know why I still did Blindside if that was the case, but that's besides the point. It's the point is she won a fucking Oscar for that. <laughs> she she marks her way through this movie like she's trying not to set off an angry stepdad. <laughs> All right, but you have to kiss me at the end, regardless. I oh, yeah, right. that. I can't wait, Sly. I can't wait to kiss you. <laughs> Great. On what I assume is your mouth. It's there. It moved. <laughs> it's down here now. Wow, it's lowering actively. It's as we moving speak. now. Yes, just keep track. <laughs> quick, yeah, kiss me quick before it gets Yummers. any lower. <laughs> But so, and she's calling the warden at the prison to complain that there's not enough murder anymore. It's just no fun to be a cop. Yep. The perspective of the 1990s, the terrifying future where it could be boring to be a police officer. <laughs> right. And I would like to point out that this is where they begin with their string of incredibly correct predictions. Yeah. They have FaceTime and self-driving cars in this. Ooh. They nail it. Yeah. Now that that's, fair, that's low hanging that fruit. Yet. Yeah. Basically, every future movie has FaceTime and self driving cars. So that's that's not much, but but we will it'll get better. They have like Teslas, but they're better than Tesla. Yeah. Like nobody crashes than... and dies because of them. Yeah. The ones Elon Musk made. <laughs> but this is also where we subtly introduce the mole people, right? So this this is the great stupid tech that you get in movies. A graffiti gun rises out of the ground and auto sprays a bunch of graffiti, but still in the style that you would do it if you were doing it with a spray can. Why? What? Okay. <laughs> There's libertarian mole people living underground in the sewers. What they they're starving, by the way. What they did with their resources was build a spray paint android robot drone yep. that pops out of the ground and does low level vandalism on walls that can immediately erase the graffiti on a race self erasing walls. Yes. Okay. Okay. But he, if the libertarians were underground and starving, that is what they would yeah, use. Okay. Their resources. You know what? <laughs> it's withdrawn again. Withdrawn again. What would Dennis Leary do underground? Yep. <laughs> He'd try to build a spray paint robot. Yeah. That was like, I'm an asshole. Fuck right. you. Yep. Yep. That's he would he would build a fuck you spray paint robot instead of a shower. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but we cut down and we see him leading his gang of subterranean fucking chimney sweeps or whatever, and they're like, "Boy, we're gonna be oh. important to the movie later, huh?" Mm -hmm. So good. That I mean, this is the perfect typecast. They were like, "Okay, libertarian mole people. We need a king." Dennis Leary. Yep. Dennis Leary is the king of the he's libertarian the king mole of people. Libertarian mole people. Yep. I think he's he. That's on his business card. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He was actually already under the set trying to start <laughs> libertarian mole people. <laughs> he under just crawls out into the you know. This room. is actually hey. super convenient. Um, <laughs> just uh, give him a second to adjust his eyes. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> oh, and and speaking of the full nadir of comedy, this is also where. So we go back to the police station and we introduce Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> The only person in this movie for whom the future should have terrified him. Okay. I will. I'm going on record. I did not like Rob Schneider then. Don't like him now. I. This was one of the few that I got right. Okay. All like, right. This isn't funny. Yeah. He's not funny. Nope. He sure the fuck isn't. Loved Rob Schneider. No, you <laughs> didn't. Loved him. Yeah. No, you you, you want to know something? Him. No, you didn't. So Loved him. God damn it. I was Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. For multiple Fuck Halloween. Off. Oh, Jesus Christ. I could vote when I was Deuce Bigelow, oh, male Jigolo, oh, please for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> See, this is why uh, democracy doesn't work. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to raise that age to yeah. there. But before the Internet go, I, my friends. How old is Eli? Just like two years older than Eli is now. <laughs> 
So yeah, so Rob Schneider is there. He does so little in this movie too, like even for Rob Schneider. Well, I mean, yeah, he's showing off his chops as a three second extra in a sketch with somebody funny next to him. Right, yeah. <laughs> in this case, Sandra Bullock. Well, yeah, exactly. And I want to point out that this is where they predict that we will be avoiding physical contact. This is, They do their Ooh. not quite handshake. Yeah, they do the, like the Romeo and Juliet kiss thing instead of the high five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or no, the, yeah. the Rosalind, the Romeo and Rosalind kiss. Okay. Deep cut, act one. So. <laughs> right, Eli? Right? Shakespeare? No. Nailed it? Not in the movie. It's fine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's not a movie. I'm talking about a play by William Shakespeare. They do allegedly. a high. They do an almost high five and then do circles around it. You're saying that's in Romeo and Juliet. Yes. I don't. Wow. Think Eli doesn't know this. Read a book. <laughs> so, I'm so happy right now. That is in. Yes, it's in Romeo and Juliet at the beginning. OK, so Sandra Bullock is um, still complaining that there aren't enough murders and assaults. Damn it. Yep. She's, she's brought this to the general police force. She wants this. In. Guys, come on. Yeah. And of course, this is also where we introduce the fact that whenever anybody cusses, there's a little robot in the back that that finds them for it. And I'm like, bots policing our language nailed another one. Yeah, (laughs) Mm -hmm. they really did. Amazing. Uh, One thing they didn't get quite right, I guess, but I'm looking forward to it. In 2032, everyone's going to talk like a like an incel yoga instructor for the most part. <laughs> yep. I don't know why that would be the case. This is mm-hmm. one of those times where like Sly Stallone was like, I predict the future and they let him do it. They let him write some of this, I think. I got to feel like this weird thing that they, and, and they still do this a lot, this idea that somehow in the future we're going to lose contractions. That is the opposite <laughs> mm-hmm. of how language works. That's like when they show the moon partially blown up. That is to linguists as the moon partially blown up in the fucking background is to astronomers yeah it's so <laughs> stupid yeah and so we're in sandra bullock's police officer office right yes and mm-hmm. she's lieutenant huxley by the way lieutenant lenina huxley at that yes yeah, so. all all this huxley author of brave new world and main female character in brave new world read a book nailed it so <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's got this office full of like 90s stuff because she's a big fanatic about the old timey 90s and that's represented her office by a snake in a can that pops out mm-hmm. and scares her the peanut brittle top thing. partner yeah. mm-hmm. benjamin bratt and also a samurai sword on the wall and a poster of blood sugar sex magic by the red Hot chili peppers yep, yep. Uh, she's also she also got a uh, lethal weapon yes poster, lethal yeah. weapon three no less Wow. Well, and that's what I love about it is they keep saying, wow, you sure are into the 20th century as though the 20th century was 1993. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's how I think of it. The whole (laughs) century. Yeah. Okay. So then we cut to Wesley Snipes in in the prison. It's time for his parole hearing. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Quick thing. Uh Uh, Parole for good behavior. (laughs) It doesn't really make sense. If you're frozen, <laughs> did he behave? You stayed in frozen. the cryo freeze. What better behavior is there than staying frozen in your cryo freeze? The one guy who melts is just like, "Fuck, I can't." Yeah, uh. that guy doesn't get parole. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'll say it better than the current system. <laughs> I'll true that. <laughs> so yeah, so the warden is going through all his little speech that he has to do, and Wesley Snipes the whole time is translating it into Spanish. Yeah, but like. <laughs> Me, 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 yeah, me. yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Stop translating me into Spanish. We hate that in the future. There's no reason. For him. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but just then he says, do you have anything to say for yourself? And he says, Teddy bear. And it turns out that that's the voice override on his handcuffs. Okay. I, I don't think handcuffs should have a voice <laughs> override. <laughs> Yeah, may, maybe don't have a verbal password is what I wrote in my notes here. Yeah. 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 That said, though, I do want to see a future where all the prisoners are just walking around being like, uh, Coach Magoots, uh, three, <laughs> three penny opera, hats and coats. <laughs> Nicholas. Cut. Ah, I got it. Hats and coats. Mine was hats and coats, everybody. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people say Teddy and Bear sometimes. Could we just yeah. have weird words if we're going to have a verbal Right, password? at the very could least, be... could it be like the AI code to make the robot love you or something? Yeah. 
Let's say the the words that trigger the winter soldier, but no. They're randomly assigned. One guy gets like, let me go. Oh, this fucking <laughs> sucks. I'm going to have a terrible week. <laughs> My guy's got let me go. I'm going to get this. They're going to pop right off him. But yeah, so but he gets out of his cuffs and he starts kicking a bunch of ass. And of course, his name is Simon Phoenix. So this is where he goes. Simon says, die. Oh, which God. Is fucking awesome. This movie will occasionally remember that it set that up and yeah. it's great. <laughs> and when it does, it's they, great. They occasionally remember and then they're like, Simon's, and it never makes sense. They just, <laughs> not for the rest of the movie. All no. no, they remember it once in act two. Yeah. yeah. All right. So meanwhile, back at the station, they're getting a code 187 and they don't even know what the fuck that is because it's been so long. Who can remember something 16 years old? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a uh, a murder death kill. A what? Yeah, a murder <laughs> death kill. A murder death kill. Uh, in the future, we combine all similar words we can think of within like five or ten seconds that Sly Stallone can think of. Right. That's why we stop doing contractions. It's all about making sure we can talk for the longest possible amount of time to get the information. Out. Murder death kill hats just the first three, just the first three. <laughs> i love to when they ask what's a 187 the computer has a little graphic for murder <laughs> so, yep. someone program that in guys. The chalk, they have the chalk outline guy to be like <laughs> yes. this was what we, we meant you wouldn't know oh, stupid i'm a computer and it also <laughs> tells us the last murder ever was in 2010. Thanks, Obama. And like, that's, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to think this is a bad society. They have they got rid of murder for the last 22 years. It's amazing here. But was it worth it? Yep. The rest of this movie that will ask you, was it worth it? The answer is yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. absolutely yes. <laughs> no murder for 22 years. I'm trying to think of what I wouldn't give up for that. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have a list. Cussing. Saying the word fuck. I, I don't think I can... I don't think, yeah, no, I'm, there's less murder plus me. I get to still say fuck. I'm, I'm with that. I just pay the credits, right? Cause it's not like you can't. Do That's it. true. That's I'll true. just not talk. I will be silent forever if we can get, <laughs> yeah. there's no murder and no talking. <laughs> Fucking great. Love it. Sounds good. So, but this is where, of course, Sandra Bullock's cop instincts kick in and she starts typing into a computer that's voice activated while also talking to it, telling it to do the same thing. That she's typing it. Something is superfluous there. I want it not to work like when you try to unlock the door that. while someone's tugging on the handle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't. So. Am I talking and typing? Yeah. Am I, you stop talking and typing. I'm talking to myself. Type. type God. Fuck. But they figure out it was Simon Phoenix and he's got himself a future car to get away in. But Wesley Snipes shows up at this public computer terminal and it turns out that he has super hacking powers. Now, this is a movie, so that will be represented by he can type really, really fast. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, we, we do find out what the hacking code for that terminal is. It is uh seven 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 seven. You're right, seven, it is. Seven. Yep, that is the that is the safety override code. It was all sevens, really? Yep. Yep. All <laughs> sevens. Teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> So, but he's hacking his way around on this computer and, and suddenly he can hear a voice in his head telling him to kill Dennis Leary. And I'm like, that might be me. And in 1993, <laughs> I can't say for sure. Just turns and little baby Noah's smoking a cigarette. Come on, man, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you kill Dennis Leary. I'll tell you about your accountant. <laughs> this is <a> <laughs> Swap bag and board. <laughs> Oh, no, he's not a wizard, man. <laughs> yeah. If Dennis Leary gets killed by a Manchurian candidate, Noah, because he watched this yesterday, yeah. uh, you know, that's not out of the question. It's like it's like the future, right? Worth it in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so all the cops show up to arrest Wesley Snipes and they don't know how to cop at all. It's pretty funny, actually, the whole bit where they're they don't know what to do. But like, honest, I had this moment of crisis because sometimes I sit at, alone and I'm like, how did we get here as a society? And movies where the fear is that we could possibly have a society where there's no murder and a black guy could just beat up all the cops with his mind karate, with his ice taught karate. Like, that's <laughs> that's how we got here as a society. These were our movies. <laughs> something, something. Kyle Rittenhouse is acquitted of all charges. Okay. Like I see, <laughs> yeah. I see the line. See, this is why we need critical race theory in schools. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. The, like th this is the theory of this movie. Libertarians made this movie think, 
we're going to like lose guns and then cops are going to forget how to use guns and then they're going to forget how to police anybody and then sarcasm and contractions are going to go away because of critical race theory. That's what they're saying. Is that yeah. what they're saying? In though? 16 years. So, <laughs> well, we better enjoy it while we can, I guess. But yeah, but Wesley Snipes refuses to be politely arrested and instead kicks all the cops' asses. Yeah. And then we have to meet this movie's main villain. This is Dr. Cocteau. I don't I don't know that he has an official. He's just the savior of the city, right? He's not like the mayor or anything. He's just some dude. Yep. He's just the liberal gay coded yes. guy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's John Cocteau. They, I mean, they do a bunch of name shit. This is like Huxley. This is John Cocteau, the French yeah. artist. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And he's dressed like a Jedi samurai, which is nice. It actually looks good on him. Yeah, <laughs> it does, though. He has a very strong gown game, and I think maybe that's why he's in charge. He has the strongest of the gown games. He does. I would say, yeah, he does. He's also FaceTiming all of the council members, mm -hmm. but but it's one of those future predictions that they always get wrong where, like, every FaceTime needs its own camera and chair, yeah. which is just a super poor use of space. Like, they would have known <laughs> right? that back then. <laughs> No, because they want to still have a boardroom. Why would what 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 would they do with it, guys? We we can sell the really long table too. In fact, we could just use this room for ping pong or something. <laughs> like so many better things. We could do so many activities. <laughs> Look at all the space we have. Did we just become best friends? So yes. <laughs> so yeah, but he and he's telling all of them that he's had enough of Dennis Leary, and I'm like, I am so with the bad guy in this movie <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> Again, it's like slowly pans over to baby Noah in the corner. Now, this guy knows what he's fucking talking about. All right. <laughs> so and then we also have to meet his assistant. Now, according to the IMDb trivia, this character in the novelization of this movie that apparently exists and Heath is getting for Christmas is identified as being a eunuch. <laughs> There's a novel? Yes, there's apparently a novelization what? of Devolution Man. Okay, you're not you're not talking about you're not talking about the like Eastern European novel that they very clearly stole this entire no, movie uh, from, no. right? I'm, I'm talking about the post movie coming out novelization. Yeah. Wow, just yes. to add insult to injury, they're like, and now we write a novel that we you you didn't do anything. You <laughs> yeah, did right. not help. We had both. We did both. This ourselves. is your next citation needed episode, Heath. <laughs> the novelization the novelization and you know what <laughs> no jokes none of our jokes if anyone goes to interrupt with jokes you say shut the fuck up and then this you just fucking serious to describe and I just read it you just read word it. for word the it's a seven and a, i don't know how long that audiobook <laughs> is it's a seven and a half hour long episode so <laughs> that's my april fool's day joke this year yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so we meet him and then we cut back over to Sandra Bullock, who says, hey, wasn't he in jail when this all started? Why don't we just do whatever you guys did that ended him him being in jail in the first place? And old timer cop is like, for that, we're going to need Sly Stallone. Yeah, it's so Simon Phoenix, Wesley Snipes is an old fashioned 90s hardened criminal and that doesn't exist anymore. So we're going to need an old fashioned cop. Nope. You never need an old fashioned anything. No, anything. <laughs> that's never, that's never the only one man can stop. Nope. It's never nope. that. It's never one man. It's never old fashioned. Mm -mm. Nope. None of that. Unless you are ordering an old fashioned, you never need an old fashioned. <laughs> well, right. And of course, Sandra Bullock is a big fan. She was a big fan of police violence. So she has, she cues up a video of Sly Stallone's greatest hits from back when he was a rogue cop. Okay, thank you. We need to talk about this <laughs> this greatest hits reel. Because at one point, he's carrying a little girl out of some wreckage, and the reporter says, why would you destroy a $24 million mall for a little girl whose ransom was only $10,000? Fuck you, lady! <laughs> now, okay, luckily that little girl does tell her to fuck herself, and that is great, mm. and that is good, and it's should be best. in every movie. But I... <laughs> The question very much upset me. I laughed for a while at this little girl being like, fuck you, lady. Yeah. She <laughs> saved my life. She's she's going places, whoever that is. That I hope it's that like eight-year-old actor who improvised that line and they were just like, wow, keep that. Yeah, keep That's it. Amazing. Brando, first take. Lister, I have petitioned my co-hosts for years to let me have a soundboard. They have said no, probably for good reason. That's why you're still here. 
But I would add fuck you, lady, to oh, my soundboard yeah. if I had it. <laughs> That's that and Baba Booey would be half the podcast. Mm-hmm. If you're not getting a soundboard. <laughs> right. It'd be the people. Well, uh, apparently I need to renew <laughs> the no soundboard clause. So we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back in a flash with all the prophetic ass kicking that is Demolition Man. Boing. I get boing. My wife would be in there. My wife. <laughs> yes. I'd get that one. Height of humor. The, the Sean Penn. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> that one. And this one is the Lima Beans. Lima Beans? Why would we need that? Uh, for the Lima dude, obviously. Hey, guys. What's, uh, what's with all the pills? Are we checking to see if God's not real again? Because I told you guys I need a weekend for that. And you can't just surprise no, me. I need to he, plan ahead. No, Eli and I got to thinking about this week's movie and all the future stuff that's in it. And you know it's just a matter of time before there's food pills. So we figured, why not get a jump start on that, right? Look, guys, if you want to make meals a breeze, why don't you just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I don't know, Heath. Noah and I are awful picky. Well, HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. That does sound awesome. Okay, so where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts? That's right. It's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thanks, Heath. Also, those aren't food pills. I think those are Eli's leftover Tamiflu. Oh. We're going to be sick, huh? Yeah. Yep. I would say you'll be very sick. Uh, Mr. Bosnick, welcome to the year 2032. Wow, everything's so cool. Yes, but I must warn you, everything is much different now. Oh, yeah? How so? Well, uh, first of all, there hasn't been a murder in 16 years. Wow, that's that's awesome. But that's really great. I'm afraid you won't be able to eat meat or swear. Oh, um, I mean, that's, that's kind of lame, but okay. Uh, I really? Guess I just okay. Don't... Oh, also, also, all the music is commercial jingle. Again, I I personally find that pretty lame, but I guess if there's like a murder-free society, we could probably discuss the music thing at some point. Wow, right? at, like, uh, you're you're taking this really well. Yeah, no, no, I could see how people would would not enjoy this mildly, but I mean, no murder is definitely worth jamming out to the by men and jingle. No, I no, I I meant that your podcasting partner, Murder Death, killed like four people when we told him about it. Oh, no, that tracks. That does track. I'll do more. Get me a burger, by the way. Yeah, that's... And scotch. Mm-hmm. So many more. <laughs> and we're back, and we're going to rejoin this movie in the dry ice slash ambient smoke room mm-hmm. where they're thawing out our hero, John <laughs> Spartan. Oh, uh, if they don't do the super long pee like they did in Austin Powers, they miss their opportunity. That's right? all I'm saying right now. Well, I love to because we see on the computer, they've got this laser cutting him out and it's cutting him out two dimensionally like he's a paper doll. <laughs> like I, I wanted there to like they get done. There's still ice above and below him. They're like right depth. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Seems like you wouldn't need a laser for ice. It's, it's ice, ice, right? Just, <laughs> that's We cut ice well, long before there were lasers, I, I believe. <laughs> I don't even think you have to. Yeah, melt you to... Why not? Why does it have to happen? It, like, Heat just melt it. happens. Someone just takes Sly Stallone out into the parking lot and throws them on the ground. <laughs> oh, God. This fucking hurt my shoulder. Ow. <laughs> so they wake his ass up. I love the, it's it's fucking it's a stupid ass sci fi movie so they have to get through this quick. He's like, wait, it's been like forty years. Is my wife dead? And they're like, yep. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna get over that disturbingly quickly, aren't I? They're like, yep. <laughs> well, here's what's crazy, and this is gonna bring me to my fan theory that Sandra Bullock is his daughter. He's like, what about my daughter? And they're like, mm. and he's like, I will never follow up on that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Well, they <laughs> they wrote a daughter plot. And then they cut it out for yes. time because it was 
too slow, but they the way they cut it, they're fucking idiots. So they definitely made it seem like she's the daughter. And then they, you know, fuck later. So yeah, bananas. Well, so I, I read somewhere that the reason that they cut it out is because ultimately that leaves him having sex with a girl that's the same age as his daughter and that like test audiences didn't like that bit. But yeah, this movie was trimmed and rewritten and recut a half dozen times after everything was done on it. So there's a lot of that kind of shit. We'll get to another huge one a little bit later on. But yeah, there was a subplot where his daughter was in the sewers with Dennis Leary's chimney sweep gang. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, man. How much of a bummer is that? How much do you wish your daughter was dead in the giant earthquake? Yeah, right. Instead of a libertarian <laughs> dating Dennis Leary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course he wants a cigarette, but cigarettes are illegal. This is back when they would actually like say the name of the brand of there were cigarette product placements in this. Oh, fuck yeah. But cigarettes are illegal in this world. He says, are you shitting me? And then this is where he learns uh, uh, that uh, cussing is also illegal in this world. Yeah. Yeah. Smoking, drinking, meat, chocolate, gasoline, Mm -hmm. spicy things these are all illegal <laughs> because of the critical race theory yeah they also mention that abortion is illegal but so is pregnancy without a license yes so i like i get what they're going for that's like the one thing that they like libertarians can get me on is like well it's freedom of choice yeah okay that is a libertarian thing sort of fine but if it was illegal and you had to get a pregnancy license i might uh, like you know, I have mixed feelings about that. <laughs> he's coming around. He's coming All around. Right. He's He's got some hot eugenics takes for our comedy podcast. <laughs> I was reading up on the Supreme Court recently. I don't know. They're making yeah. some good points. Oh, How many Jesus. generations God. would you say is enough, Heath? Fuck. <laughs> this is, that you. was a, a bit, everybody, yeah, was, just now. A little bit. So, yeah, but so then this is where Sly Stallone goes to meet all the other cops with just an ass full of shit residue, apparently. <laughs> this is where we introduced the three seashells. The fact that he just walks out with his poop tush is a real <laughs> alpha move and really descriptive of the 90s. Right? <laughs> if somebody walks over to you and they're fully clothed, they just walked from the bathroom and they're like, there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. They are covered in shit right, right. now. And they put their clothes back on over it. Unless, That's what's happened in their or life. Or they wash their ass in the sink. <laughs> right. Or they have to follow it up with, and I really need to use it. Right. Well, right. <laughs> right. <that's... laughs> but yeah, but I also want to point out a toilet paper shortage. Another prediction that they got correct. Uh, yes. In this yeah, movie. This is where they, uh, they talk about the three seashells. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that, like, I know that this movie has been reviewed by other bad movie podcasts and like it's been talked about as a bad movie. There's too much dialogue on the internet about the three seashells. <laughs> I Googled it and there's like a bunch of very serious conversations by adults who could have done anything else with their time <laughs> being like, here's where I think the three seashells are. We didn't need the internet was a mistake. Okay, I have a theory about the th the three shells that I would like to discuss. I feel right. like we've kind of poisoned the well. Yeah, on right. Theory now. <laughs> but here's the thing: this is the place, not Google. I feel like the part where someone <laughs> they have to come to us for the three shells. But we're Googleable, though, Eli. We are. Okay. We're all. Yeah, maybe we are is, part it's of all the problem. Googleable. I veto the rest of this comedy podcast. I guess. <laughs> I guess the premise of my joke that I'm getting around to is no. Fun. <laughs> Fun. So what do you guys think of that tea up? You like that one? <laughs> so so what's your theory after that weird edit? It's so no. weird that you stopped talking so quickly there. No, thanks like, to all joke. the Patreon donors for the support. You can go to No more jokes. <laughs> If I was committed to this bit, I would yell no more jokes every time I start to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we, we hit so the two. So I'd We're like good. to <laughs> espouse my theory mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the three shells. Uh, w Eli, do you have a theory first? Would you like to go first? Okay. So here's the one I found most convincing online. Is it the one that the writers of the movie admitted was what they had in mind? Oh, no. Oh, did they have a theory? Well, I don't. I, I know that both Sly Stallone and Sandra Bullock have gone on the record saying, no, this is how it was supposed to work. I think it's all 
post facto bullshit, but it has been officially addressed. Oh. Really? My theory, the one I found online that I found most convincing is they are the controls for a bidet system. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Damn it. Okay, mine's dumb then. <laughs> That's not what it was. You might have the right one. <laughs> I, I did not think that up. I think there's a way. So, you know, uh, what's the word when you with the caviar, you quenelle it or whatever? I think it's like that. That's the worst image you've ever put in I my head. I feel like it's... I don't know what I that means. I hate you. So. I think... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not no. fancy enough to know no. special caviar words. <laughs> joke veto. No, no. There's three foodies who got that joke and they hate you as much as I do because they know <laughs> that quenelle is when you take two spoons and you take the caviar and you make it into a little lump. And that's what you're talking about but, doing but with the, yes. like, I feel like it. And then the third yes. one is to you put the two that you used in it. It's it's just a holder. It's like, you know, the spoon holder next to the stove. I think that one's for the scraping of what can't get quenelled and then you pick yeah and then you pick up i feel like it's a cleanup yeah Mm -hmm. okay that works that works too yep that's i believe the official explanation of how to wipe your ass wait they they say quenelle in no (laughs) no i I, I, know i'm 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 encountering that for the first time just just now to be fair if Sly Stallone says the word Quinnell, he has to go back to his home dimension. So (laughs) (laughs) he avoids it so But yeah, glad we could add a little more commentary to that topic. As Eli said, it really hasn't had enough commentary yet. So, okay. So then we we move on to another Sandra Bullock info dump where they explain that everybody has microchips in them except for Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, well, this is fascism because he's mad that he has a chip that can locate him in the future. And I was just like, fuck, this is okay. This is a documentary for libertarian idiots. Now. They're, they're watching this now in 2021 and they're like, see, it nailed yep, everything. And it was and in the vaccine. Real. I love he says at this point, he's like, well, why don't you just shove a leash up my ass? And I'm like, how would that help? What would the leash okay. be hooked to up he your ass? To hold, can't shove. <laughs> is there an anchor in there? <laughs> Sorry, you got to shove part of the leash up my ass and hold the other part. But even then, if he stops <laughs> clenching at any moment, you know, I won't, though, you're I getting promise. shit on. <laughs> Your ass is covered in shit, man. Did you wipe? <laughs> what happened there? Did you, you see quinelle? Shell? You got a quinelle with them. Did you try to use five post-its to wipe up your 36-year <laughs> shit from seen before? <laughs> oh, our next vacation, I'm just hearing Heath on the phone trying to convince the guy to get the microchip in it. Dude, you have to use the three shells, man. I got to get back inside. <laughs> Don't just walk around with your butt full of poop. Come on. <laughs> it's 11 p.m. Dennis Leary's just got shit. All, that's his act now. It's just shit everywhere. This is freedom. It's basic freedoms. Always been his act. Yeah. Smoking a cigarette. Yeah. So, okay. And and this is where they, they figure out that in order to get a gun, Wesley Snipes is going to have to go to the museum. And I just want to point one thing out. When they say that, the boss guy is like, Psh, it's in maximum security. Just pin in that yeah. for when we get to the scene in the museum. Yeah. Uh, also, do museums keep like a big store of live bullets right next to Cannonballs, gunpowder. In the guns. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, lot of ammunition that you wouldn't think they'd need. But we go to this museum. Now, I will warn you ahead of time. I have the fucking word brilliant in my notes like eight times during this scene this is one of the all-time great 90s movie bullshit silly action sequences like ever like it, it, it i i guess all time and ever kind of imply the, the same thing but this is a phenomenal fucking fight right and i have to warn you that what noah is referring to is not the racist scenes Wesley Snipes opens this scene no, yeah. with. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Yeah, I no, need to say that so I can still feed my baby. <laughs> pretty problematic at the beginning. Talking about the cannon. Yeah. No. So, yeah, but he's in the, the hall of violence in the museum <laughs> uh, where they show off all the guns and shit. Oh. oh, we have to cut back to Sly Stallone so he can have his whole I'll drive moment. Yeah, but he can't because he does cars too fancy. Yeah. And again, they predicted a uh, Tesla that you'd need to push two buttons on the screen to open the uh, glove box. You know, they they got it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. 
and this is also where we introduce, and you guys have to admit that this is fucking brilliant. The fact that all the music in the future is, is advertising jingles. Yep. It's just great. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> That's good shit. And they're singing along. To, it's really good. Because of critical race theory, we we only like add jingles <laughs> in 2032. If you add that. I enjoyed it, though. And sure. But yeah, so he, he gets a bunch of guns and then he's like, wait a minute, this is the future. This takes place in 2032. Shouldn't there be some kind of laser guns or something? And I'm like, yes, there should be Wesley Snipes. So here's my problem with this scene. At one point when he's raiding the weapons, he goes, excuse me, Rambo. But Sylvester Stallone <laughs> is Rambo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I just That's very upsetting that he knows about Rambo and doesn't go like, hey, Josh Martin. Do you know you look just like fucking Rambo? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I get that. I get a lot of a that. A fictional character played by Sylvester Stallone, who I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> but so they have this amazing, awesome fight scene where Wesley Snipes has to cannon his way out. And they end up like falling through a glass floor and fighting in like a diorama of old L.A. <laughs> it's great. Great scene. This is very awesome. Yep. This is also it. probably the best worst action line in all of action movie history where Sly hits Wesley Snipes with a TV and, and yells, <laughs> you're on TV. You're on TV. You're on TV. Yep. <laughs> he swings it around by the cord. It's, yeah, this right. Is, That's going to work. This is a TV from the 90s. <laughs> this is a large cube yes, of a fucking exactly. TV. And he swings it around the cord so goddamn slowly because like it's mace. impossible not to. And he's like, you're on television. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, the TV's on you, but it still works. <laughs> oh, when you're done with that, give that to Noah. He needs it for his old Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But ultimately, though, Wesley Snipes knows that this is still act two. So he runs off, even though he's got the, the bigger guns and shit. Yeah. They also tried. This is where they try to do the Simon Says thing again. Oh, right, right. Yep. And what does he say? He's like, you forgot to say Simon Says, like some something that was the banter from Stallone mm -hmm. while they're having this gunfight. Yeah. But it doesn't really. I don't think they know how Simon Says works the game. I don't know. Think that they do. I think they're actually confused by that. Although. I will say this. The only thing I would find more entertaining than this movie is watching 1990s Sylvester Stallone and 1990s Wesley Snipes try to play a game of Simon Says with the amount of cocaine that was going through their bloodstream. Could have been fun. Yes, please. All right. So, but Wesley Snipes is running away from the action scene. And this is where he runs into Dr. Cocteau, but he can't shoot him because of his clockwork orange programming, guys. Yeah. Oh. How would, like, he can't kill this guy. He has a gun. Mm -hmm. And he, I guess he fires it once, but like his programming, his hypnotism programming makes him shoot wide and yes. miss. Yeah. yeah. Like, he can't kill this guy. Like, the pen is real blue. Like, <laughs> exactly. What, is exactly. The, what does that mean? It's like a Robocop. He can't kill somebody who works for OCP, apparently. <laughs> also, the guy who, the little assistant dude, Assistant Bob, I think his name is. Mm hmm. He brings a gong with him wherever he goes. And I just want to throw this out there. I admire anyone who brings a gong with them wherever they go. I want to be rich <laughs> enough to have a gong guy. Because, like, I don't, they never use the gong, right? But what I feel like that's for is that when you're sick and tired of somebody, you just reach over and hit the gong, right? Oh, like the gong show. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Or just that drowns them out. So even if they keep talking, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. I want a gong guy and I want the Showtime at the Palo hook guy. Both. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They have to work in concert. Yeah. Guys, we are describing a soundboard. We could all have soundboards. <laughs> this is a turning point for our show. <laughs> Episode 329 is when they took flight because that's when they all got soundboards. <laughs> all right. So this is, this is also where we introduce the ongoing bit that Sandra Bullock doesn't know how to do the 90s isms at all. She keeps getting them slightly wrong and saying that he's matched his meat and licked his ass. <laughs> and can I just say, coming from Sly Stallone, I'll lick your ass way more intimidating. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm using that from now on. That, that's winning. If you're licking somebody's, like, if I licked his ass, that means I feel like I, it's a power move by me. Like, yeah. I'm in control. That's how my cats take it. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> I love it. There's also, uh, this is just a small moment. This is where, you know, Wesley Snipes runs off and, and Dr. Cocteau is like, oh, you guys saved my life. It's so convenient that you guys came by just as he was about to shoot me. 
And this is where he invites them to dinner at the Taco Bell. Yes. Yep. This was a Pizza Hut for the outside of the U.S. version because right. people in like the U.K. didn't know what the fuck Taco Bell was. So it didn't make sense. Somebody actually uh, wrote that on Facebook. They're like, I, I, I could swear it was Pizza Hut when I watched this movie on the DVD. Yeah. But it was. Mm-hmm. Not Taco Bell. Yeah, and and apparently the writer has said that this was not a product placement thing. He wrote that in because he considered Taco Bell to be the nadir of all food. <laughs> so the idea of using Taco Bell as the the one restaurant in all the world at this point was just, you know, kind of a riff on bad taste and and consumerism. Oh god. This this movie and Taco I loved Taco Bell too when I was fucking <laughs> 11. See, there's another one that I called right. I always hated so, no, Taco no, Bell. No, I stand by Taco Bell. I stand by Taco <laughs> Bell. There are still I am a father. I am a father and there are still nights where I'm like, "You know what? Later Eli, I'm sorry for this, Bean but burrito. I am I am going to need 17 burritos yeah. for $3.46. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Right, right. And but, a Mexican pizza. Right. Took it off the menu. Might as well do get the whole five out of the way while you're there. Yeah. I would like seven handfuls of fire sauce also, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so then we, we head back to the station so Sly can deliver a little Dr. Cocteau exposition, starting with the whole... So let me get this straight thing, which never makes sense if you imagine that coming after everybody just explain the fucking thing that he's saying. I do want to start doing it, though. Like when people <laughs> tell me things, especially things that would take a long time to explain, just repeating it back. Do you have memento disease? <laughs> but yeah, so but we learned that Dr. Cocteau is the guy who like kind of set up all of the modern society shit that differentiates this place for the 90s. You know how one guy completely defines a decade? It's that. It's that. One man. Nope. It's never one. It's no. never that. It's <laughs> uh, never, 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 never. Nope. So yeah. So then we get Sandra and Sly heading to dinner. This is where we learn that Arnold Schwarzenegger is a ex-president in this world. Yeah. This movie is a magical prophet. It got so much right. Got a lot right. Wait. Got a lot right. Is there something about Schwarzenegger that you guys know and I don't? <laughs> I feel like he, he could have taken it. He the was gold almost was there. president. He they they considered an amendment to make it possible for him to become president yeah, after he became true. governor of California. That's true. So yeah, and then of course I have to mention this one very quick scene. Wesley Snipes is heading down into the sewer world where Dennis Leary lives, and the. He's not going to do anything there. They just uh, introduced this very quickly. But when he opens up the sewer grate, the man says, and I quote, I love that smell. It reminds me of biscuits and gravy. Okay. What? That has haunted my fucking nightmare since 1993. <laughs> Here is the thing. Either Wesley Snipes has never had biscuits and gravy or... At one point, Wesley Snipes was like, hey, guys, do you know that biscuits and gravy don't smell like human shit, right? And they were like, <laughs> we, do we do not, not know that. Say the no fucking line. <laughs> do you want cocaine with no taxes? Get in the <laughs> This really reminds me of biscuits and gravy. All right, let's go. <laughs> line it up. So anyway, so Sandra and, and Slash show up at the at the Taco Bell. Jolly Green Giant's playing in the background. Fucking brilliant. It's so good. But it's not just <laughs> Jolly Green Giant. They have like a guy at a piano, yeah. like a fancy yeah. bar doing Jolly. It's good. Hey, credit where credit's due. That's fucking great. <laughs> That's a great bit. By the way, according to the IMDb trivia, the rock dress that Sandra is wearing throughout this scene weighed like 40 pounds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I just want to point out that they do like the meal and sli it's supposed to look gross, but it very much looks like a meal Heath and I would wait online for six hours for. Yeah, so, sure you did. Know, <laughs> like a, another prediction that came true. Okay. I actually wrote my notes. That deconstructed taco looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it did. So yeah, so they eat fancy ass food for a little while while we do yet more info dump. Yep. Right. But then just as they're getting to the tension part of the info dump where Sly Stallone is like, I was awake while I was quiet, technically frozen, which I have so many, like I could fill the rest of our podcast with just the implications and questions about yeah. his consciousness <laughs> for 36 years. But then Dennis Leary and the mole people come out and start to steal. Food. Right. They're like, this scene was getting boring. We figured we should attack it, do some action or something. Okay. Yeah. Again, 
this guy, Cocteau, he, he fixed the cesspool of hate and suffering and it's world peace and there's no murder. And Stallone is like, don't trail me, I'm a libertarian. That's the argument back. And then he adds that he had nightmares in the ice. And it's just like, all right, well, you know, we'll, we'll fix the, the nightmare in the ice thing. That's not really a big component of the world peace so much. Yeah. They're really focused on that. But yeah, it seems like the, the message that I was getting from that is that they're ignoring the, the, the problems and pretending that they don't exist with their, with their paradise. I mean, I'm sure there were murders in the sewer for the sewer people and shit. Oh, yeah. They're whatever. just not counting. Libertarians kill each other. They're just, you know. Well, yeah, freedoms. no, I'm, I'm with you. Some Mad Max libertarian Thunderdome shit would be, would be fun. So yeah, but, but they, you know, of course, Sly has to jump into action and beat up all of the starving Mad Max extras. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, <laughs> you beat those starving people to death, Sylvester yeah. Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he describes it like he has a cop instinct here because he's a 90s cop who like picks out stuff like this. This instinct is gone now. Mm -hmm. His instinct is based on seeing a guy ride ride along in a motorcycle, which is illegal now and there's no gasoline. Right. And he's got katana swords on his back and spiked <laughs> shoulder pads. Yep. You know, something about this doesn't he seem quite right. He sniffed out that bad guy <laughs> with his 90s cop instincts. Only That's one totally man can sniff out that bad guy. <laughs> Fuck you. I got a hunch. <laughs> yeah, but he kicks all of their asses and, and then they, he's like, hey, wait a minute, weren't they just trying to steal food? And, and, and Dr. Cocteau's like, yeah, but they were gross and poor. So they're libertarians. Great job. <laughs> Right. But it is gross and stupid, though. Like they could live in paradise if they just gave up guns and naughty words. They'd be fine. They wouldn't be starving. They'd be great. Yeah. Get the vaccine, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> or die in the sewer. You know what? I don't care. But you have to do one of those two things. Go in the sewer then. You do. There you go. All right. So Sandra and Sly head back to her place after the big date. And there's this great moment where like, the movie seems to be trying to get ahead of our jokes by pointing out what a one-dimensional trope Sly Stallone's character is. <laughs> right. And he's like, no, I'm not that trope. I'm a different trope. <laughs> <laughs> there are three tropes I do. Thank you very much. And she's like, do you want me to help you find your daughter? And he's like, no, we cut that part from the movie. You're my daughter now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he doesn't even want to know if she's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, again, the cutting room floor, but, yeah, it makes it pretty fucking awkward. Yeah, he also makes physical contact with her hand at one point. during They're driving, and she reaches to, like, type something into her cop computer to maybe find the daughter, and he's like, no, no, it's fine. But he touches her hand, and she has, you know, an orgasm because she's been physically touched by Sylvester Stallone, and that right. doesn't happen in this future reality. Honestly, I, I'm okay with that, though. Like, let's have no physical contact without a good deal of red tape. Like, that's fine. If that's the new rule, great. Let's have that. I think, I know I've pointed this out in other reviews. I think we don't give the actresses of the 80 enough credit for pretending to be attracted to Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Like, no, that's fair. What a monumental technique must have been required for Sandra Bullock not to be like, eh. I mean, yummers. <laughs> Yum. She's, Love she's a good an Oscar trapezoid. Worthy it's actor. like the roughest <laughs> sandpaper you could buy outside of Home Depot, not inside. <laughs> it's on sale, it's irregular <laughs> sandpaper. So, and then of course, there was apparently a minimum number of minutes of screen time that Wesley Snipes demanded. So, we get this incredibly <laughs> useless scene of him over at Dr. Cocteau's place explaining that he needs them to thaw him out some accomplices. These accomplices will never factor into the movie. Well, they will turn out to be the teensy weensy flaw in Dr. Cocteau's plan. But other than Well, there's that. Yeah, but also but he could just use regular he could just go get people from the sewers and and have the same thing. Yep. Also, are we saying that at some point cuz this movie takes place over a 2-day period, the future part are we saying that at some point in the night he stopped to make himself tire armor? <laughs> Obviously. That's what he went into the sewer to do, to get some of those tire armor. Clearly. Yeah. There's a large stash of shoulder pads that they had, I think. That's just like what you make. When you when you start a sewer colony, what are the first things you need? <laughs> oh, you're going to need shoulder Spiky pads. Spiky shoulder no. pads made of tires, right? I mean, That makes sense. You want to make sure your shoulders have good traction. So... <laughs> So we, we wrap that scene up. We go back to Sandra and Sly and 
there's this great moment where she proposes sex like somebody in an atheist convention gearing up to ask you for a selfie. Oh, see, I wrote Sandra Bullock proposes sex like Heath does. So, yeah, I get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. there's two ways of saying the same thing. In fairness, I did literally write in my notes, okay, this is how it should go. It should go. <laughs> you say, let's have sex now. You, the woman to me, say that, and it's clear what's Let happening. Let me explain and Then we get the helmet, from and then we get, we get the fuck helmets, we fill out some forms and red tape, and it's good to go. Yeah, yeah, right, right. He's like, yeah, no, I could go for some fuck. And so she goes and she gets this, I guess, VR headset fuck gear stuff. Yep. Which sounds great. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it does. But then they show it to us. Not as great. Yeah. Apparently the problem with sex was that there wasn't enough seizure triggers. Yeah. And jump scares. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what really gets me going? A good pop scare that really <laughs> gets my juices flowing. Nothing. A little... Oculus nightmare. Love that. You know, remember the ring? I like when the, you know, the, somebody pops out of the TV at me. I don't like the implication, though, here is that they just both get to sit there and orgasm like without having to move. And that sounds great. That sounds pretty tight. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I just, it's just a personal note. So I have Caesar trigger warnings on my iPad because one of the side effects of one of my meds is you could give you seizures. So I didn't realize that you could just like turn that on. So I turned it on my iPad. So I was watching this movie on Amazon Prime and then the scene started to happen and my iPad was like, you should stop watching this fucking movie. And I was like, iPad, I know, I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's meant for people with epilepsy, right? Like right, people yeah. who, would play, who can't see like a bunch of blinking lights. <laughs> But if the iPad was like, hey, man, it doesn't hold up as much as you think with Dennis Leary. <laughs> <laughs> it's really problematic. <laughs> but so and but then, of course, he 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 decides for a minute he's into it. But then he decides he doesn't want to do VR fuck stuff. So he rips off the helmet and he's like, no, I want to put my penis in you. And she reacts the way any woman should when Sly Stallone proposes that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also. She's like, no, because fluid exchange gave us AIDS. And then after AIDS, there was this. And after that, there was this. And after that. And I know the movie is trying to pitch us like a bad future. But their point <laughs> is AIDS is worth the hunk of chunk of. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, the point of the 90s is AIDS is worth the hunk of chunk of. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Hunka Chunka, by the way, is the phrase this movie uses. Eli didn't just come up with that one. That's uh, no that's Sly Stallone's term. Will I use it from now on <laughs> well, to absolutely. describe yes. sex? Will I use it when teaching my son about sex? Yes. <laughs> Sly Stallone, improvise a euphemism for sex. Hunka uh, Chunka. Don't say Chunka. <laughs> Ch- chunka. The fact that sex with Sly Stallone <laughs> is either hunk-like or chunk-like is the worst. Is the second worst image that's been in my head today. Yeah, and the no. first worst was poop in seashells. <laughs> so. Caviar. All right. So, yeah. She kicks him out for wanting to put his penis in her. And he goes down to his apartment, which is in the same building, apparently. He sits down and there's just this random, probably the most random boob shot in all of the 90s, right? Where this topless girl <laughs> calls him and she's like, oh, wrong number. But I had to call you otherwise there'd be no boobs. In- Why? Why <laughs> did the movies need boobs? No illusions. What law was passed? Because we didn't have the Internet back then, man. You had to pause something. <laughs> Anyways, you don't know, man. You don't know the fucking struggle. <laughs> We had dial-up, and we liked it. <laughs> Both directions, something. Put the toaster on its side. Come on, man. <laughs> but, of course, this is where he sees the video surveillance footage of Wesley Snipes being unable to shoot Dr. Cocteau. And so he knows something's up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's watching this video, and he's like, in his head, it looks like a... Cryogenic hypnotism to make it so Phoenix isn't physically capable of shooting. Oh, <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. Stallone acted that silently with his face. That's which was how so good crazy he yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie's about to take the fuck off, and when it does, there'll be no stopping it. So, if we want another break, this is the best time to take it. First, though, I have to give Act Three the hard sell. Will Eli and Heath find anything wrong with this movie? Well, they have to continue <laughs> to pretend it's about libertarianism and critical race theory to make their bits work. 
Why am I even on this episode? Find out the answers to two of these questions and more when we return for the white knuckle conclusion of Demolition Man. Hi, podcast listener. You know, we've had a lot of fun today with Demolition Man's three seashells, but did you know that you might be taking care of your butthole in a manner as dated as Sly Stallone's politics? That's why there's the Hello Tushy Bidet. It cleans your butt way better than wiping, cuts your toilet paper use down by 80%, saves trees and all the thousands of gallons of water used to convert them into toilet paper, and it comes with a book full of poop jokes. I got Eli a bidet for Christmas last year. And it was so great, I got a bidet for my sister last year. I'm never going back. Hello Tushy attaches to your existing toilet. There's no electrician or plumber needed, and it installs in less than eight minutes. Give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or your loved ones this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash awful. That's hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off and free shipping. Hello Tushy, because we don't have the three shells yet, but we do have these. So, uh, you're egg friendly? That's right. And they don't like me so much at top, you know what I mean? I believe in a little thing called freedom of speech and freedom of choice. Hurrah! I want to choose between the bacon cheese fries and the double steak burger with extra mayo. Hurrah! Yeah. I want to make my own decisions about agreed upon medical treatments and scientific truths. Hurrah! Oh, yeah, yeah, hurrah. No, I want everything to go through my own personal lens of truth, right and wrong, for anything that doesn't fit within that worldview to be instantly rejected. I don't know. Uh, I want to shrink like my worldview down so fucking me. small that saying I have my head up my ass would be an insult to the granularity of my worldview. I want to destroy society and culture and the concept of the internet. I want to do it in the name of a freedom that is illusory at best. Uh, uh, fucking for America. Hurrah! <laughs> Hurrah! Blue. None of us are vaccinated. Nah. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this cinematic masterpiece. And we're going to rejoin our heroes the following morning where Sly is apologizing for both trying to have sex with her and trying not to have sex with her. It's a weird morning. It's confusing. Yeah, it's a sorry I tried to come inside you sweater, you know? Yeah, well, right. He makes her a sweater. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting. I Googled it. it uh, according to Google, it takes about 21 hours to knit a sweater. So... He was speed knitting, clearly. <laughs> He's really fast, I've learned. And this is where we learn that he knows how to knit because his programming when he was in the cryo freeze was knitting. That was his rehab program? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The computer like studied his DNA and saw that he had the DNA of a knitter. Yeah. By the way, I just want to throw out there that at some point later, they will unfreeze all the bad guys. And this movie really wasted the opportunity for them to all come out with like weird, you know, hobbyist <laughs> yeah, skills, <right. laughs> painting minis. <laughs> yeah, but he and of course, there has to be the toxic masculinity where he's like, I can sew. That's a girly thing. Damn it. But then he thinks to check and see what it was that Simon Phoenix was being programmed to do while he was cryogenically frozen. And it turns out that it was to be even more killy than he was before. Feel like you shouldn't have those skills in the database in the at first all, place. really? <laughs> yes, super crime. Maybe we just don't have that one in there. Yeah. <laughs> one of them was literally urban combat kill. Yeah. Yep. I was like, yeah, okay, that was a slur, and then they changed it slightly. <laughs> I think I know who they think is genetically disposed to urban okay, combat kills so, in this movie. Christ. Okay, but the knitting is good. That's good. If everybody who's like Sly Stallone in real reality, just, I don't know, for like a couple days, we freeze them and we reprogram them to knit. Sure. Great. That would be amazing. We should do that. It would be better than being Sly Stallone. Sure. Sure. I think, honestly, Sly Stallone would agree with you at yeah. this point. <laughs> So, yeah, but so Sly and Sandra head over to Dr. Cocteau's office to ask him about all this shit. Yeah, they confront him and they're like, you're the bad guy. And he's like, well, obviously, I'm the one with an accent. Yeah. <laughs> Queer coded guy with the accent. Yeah, yeah he guy. has to be the bad guy. And I will be till like 2011, guys, till like 2011. Uh, I say 2021 and counting, I think. <laughs> also. It's just a tiny moment, but he says, I'm going to put him in a hurt locker. And 
I didn't realize that the Hurt Locker was an expression. I just thought it was the name of the movie. So I was like, man, this movie is just predicting all kinds <laughs> of weird stuff. <laughs> the Hurt Locker. So, yeah, but this is where Sly also figures out that the target here is Dennis Leary's character. So he's got to go down to the sewers and they've got to team up with him. This is also where she does another one of her... Uh, Miss Malaprops, right? Yeah. Where she's like, let's blow this guy. Right. And he's like, oh, way. And I was like, I, again, away. let's go blow this guy is a lot more intimidating if Sly Sloan <laughs> says it. <laughs> let's lick his ass, too. Then right. We can well, blow right. him and lick his yeah, ass. You, that, there's something for both of us to do then. Yeah, exactly. That's a trombone duet, Rusty. I don't know. What is this word for it? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so they head down into the sewers. They find Sewer Town. And he smells some grilling meat. So Sly is very excited. I just want to throw out there, I feel like the omnipresent fire would be a bigger deal in your underground sewer system. But that's just me. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. yeah. A lot of barrel fires with nobody around the barrel. Right. Just decoratively. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just in case you want to, like, uh, blow something up or yeah, you know, it's, hide it's behind festive. it. It's festive. If a guard comes by. <laughs> We're going to get a tour through this city and they're just going to get dragged to various things that dads think are important, right? Like there's a burger and there's a car. Yeah. That's it. Yep. That's all they came up with. Yeah. This, that, that car was fucking gorgeous. Apparently that's an Oldsmobile. I was like, what business does an Oldsmobile have looking that fucking awesome? I guess there was a point in the 70s though. Again, the camera pans over to Noah. Yeah. You could still kill. <laughs> Dennis Leary, but that's a cool car. He's in okay. this scene, actually. It'd be very easy to do. <laughs> uh, fun fact about another thing that is in this scene. Jack Black yeah. is an extra in this scene. Uncredited in this scene as well, yep. And then Dennis Leary comes on. Now, this is the first time we've really seen Dennis Leary, and this is where he does his stupid fucking bit. God, it's the worst. Yeah, he starts. It, this was his whole goddamn act where he starts going like, I want to run screaming naked through the streets, jerking off to a cigar or whatever the fuck he's talking about. And that was his whole fucking bit. God, I was just like, all right, Dennis Leary is giving a John Galt speech. I yeah. am out. I'm out for this. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm going to go dance in public and come back. That would be more fun for me right now. <laughs> I'm going to publicly <laughs> dance. Me, Heath, the real person. I will I'm, go out in public and dance now. I'm going to go to the black owned coffee shop down the street. Challenge everyone there <laughs> to a dance battle. <laughs> insist they form a circle around me. <laughs> hey, man, were you watching fucking Dennis Leary and Demo? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, I, was. Yeah, yeah. I had to escape. Okay. okay. No, we get it. Fair now. enough. All of a sudden. <laughs> okay, but I want to talk about one element of this speech because it stuck with me so long that it literally didn't make it into my notes until like a scene later. He says he wants to run naked down the street covered in jello reading Playboy. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but and he does that in a list of like i want bacon cheeseburgers but like even in 1992 we understood why you're not supposed to read pornography naked in public right yes like that's not no, jello freedom. is completely unrelated yes uh-huh okay he also was smoking a giant cigar the size of like a phone booth or something so is the movie saying we do want Dennis Leary running around naked reading porn out loud with a giant cigar in public? Yeah, the movie definitely thinks that bacon cheeseburger, giant cigar, having an erection in public <laughs> <laughs> and possibly masturbating are the same thing. I don't Those are know basically I, I thought this was America. Like <laughs> what are they talking about? You could sell the libertarian thing so much better. Uh, they also they fuck up here again. They're like, so he, he's he's mad about the the vegetarianism. So he's talking about how like there's banana broccoli shakes, and the options are like, okay, so you can have banana broccoli shakes, or you can be like smudgy and starve to death like us. And I was like, so shakes? I mean, shakes? Right? I would be smudgy and starve to death if those were the two options. <laughs> so really. I mean, you could just, you know, skip, just have the banana shake. That you could those just have the banana shake was an option. Yeah, I would take that. But yeah. 
But if it had broccoli in it, you'd choose you'd, you'd smudge, die you'd and s- you'd smudge and die. I would vomit it out if I put it in me in the first place. So yeah, what would be? You know the what, point? Noah? I I've I we've done several matrons together at this point. I you're not lying. You're telling, <laughs> you, the man's telling you the truth, podcast listener. So, <laughs> he would smudgy die rather than yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I would smudgy die rather than go to a five star restaurant with you guys. That's <laughs> so. fair. And we're making you do that. We are making yes, you, you do are. that. God damn it. All right. Papa Jasmine pillow. So <laughs> we're not going there. Good. I'm absolutely. This is what I I'm want. I'm not going there. All right. So you have to do it or I'll kill myself. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'll smudgy kill myself. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, Wesley Snipes is chatting with his thought out bad guy accomplices. Apparently, they thought out a couple of hot chicks to be in the background. <laughs> this I'm so yep. glad you pointed that. Did they unfreeze the girl groupies or did they find them? <laughs> it makes the best, very little sense. Yeah. <laughs> also, are they producing pretzels in the sewer now? Looks is like that- it. Looks like have- it. And did they have a pretzel fight right before this at their table? <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're strewn about all over the place. Yep. They're supposed to be starving. But yeah, starving here. people have a lot of spare pretzels very often. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way Wiley Coyote always had plenty of vegetables to put in the stew once he did capture the, the Roadrunner. Yeah. Oh, right. Because salt is illegal above ground. Oh, because they yeah. They didn't realize that. No, salt is not unhealthy for you. It's unhealthy in certain amounts. <laughs> you do need salt in your fucking body. Nice. Yeah. I love the idea that they would recreate the third worst snack food of all time underground. <laughs> Look, I said we will get to the shower when we get to it. I want the thing that everyone picks out of the Chex Mix and I want it now. <laughs> Did we make a graffiti machine yet? Okay. Good. We can move on to the pretzel maker. Yeah, hold on, exactly. hold on. Do we have tire shoulder pads? <laughs> we've, got, okay, we've got a whole way. Okay, now pretzels. All Fine. Right. So, okay, so, but meanwhile, as they're all working out what the plot of this is and everything, Wesley Snipes and his goon gang show up in the sewers to kill him. And they do it in the tried and true method of shooting him from very far away without aiming first and yelling about their intentions. Yep, yep. <laughs> to be fair, at least he didn't enter yelling John Sparta. That's right? true, Which is yeah, right, right. The part, yeah. <laughs> Only fair to give warning. yeah. So, so now, luckily, though, the bar table they're sitting at is bulletproof. So Sly picks it up and <laughs> and it, by, by the way, it's this tiny little, you know, it's the little round top. It's the tiny little table. His enormity of his body is sticking out on all four sides and shit. And he just slowly walks away from the bullets. Yeah, he's got like the espresso tamper and he's just blocking <laughs> all the bullets. Yes. Yep. Mm hmm. So, oh, and we have to point out that the sissy partner cop gets knocked out at this point. That'll be important later. Yeah. So Simon Phoenix gets away. This is him trying to kill Sly Stallone, but he gets away for some reason because, you know, otherwise there wouldn't be a car chase. And of course, this is where we get to use the sweet ass muscle car that they've introduced into the show. <laughs> they take. OK, here's here's this the sentence what happens that happens. He goes, I saw an elevator shaft. So they take an elevator through the street above them. Through a floor in a building, yes. Which means what? that they went through the whole substructure, all the piping. <laughs> okay. What, is, what does the movie think happened with that elevator at the end? So here is my order of things I want to see. Sly Stallone playing Simon Says with Wesley Snipes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sly Stallone explaining what an elevator is. There you go. <laughs> this movie. He's like, well, no, I saw it in Willy Wonka. It, it's what you can do actually. They can go sideways. That's what it is. It's a Wonka vape. There, that right. explains it all. Yeah. Answer. So he starts chasing Wesley Snipes. Now he's in the old gas powered vehicle, so he can go faster than Wesley Snipes. But Wesley Snipes is in the future vehicle, so that like when he shoots out his tire, he can reinflate it. Why would future cars be slower? Because they don't use gasoline. Yep. Great question. But they're using like something that we find out in a second is like nuclear powered, like fused helium solution. <laughs> well, that's true. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. We also find out here that the auto inflate tires, those are on manual. Why? Right? I feel like that should be an automatic <laughs> thing. The very name auto inflate would really. <laughs> yeah. You know what never happens? You never have to say auto inflate, please. That's not a sentence that makes sense, but that's what they go for here. 
Who do they think is like, oh, a tire blew. Please keep it that way. Right. Please yeah, keep it right, that way. right. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. See I have how to learn. this plays out. <laughs> Let it happen. <laughs> what? So, of course, Sly's driving along and he's like, hey, this is an action movie, so I have to get on top of the car. Sandra Bullock, you drive. Now, in the universe of this movie, she's never driven a car that works on gasoline that has pedals or anything like that. So she's winging it this whole time. Man, I cannot express to the younger generations what percentage of movies used, but I've never driven a car before as a plot point. <laughs> So, but Sandra Bullock can fucking drive. She she jumps a bus like a year after this. It's, she does. Yeah. She does jump a bus with a much more handsome man beside her. Yep. <laughs> All right. So th there's also this great moment. He leaps onto Dennis Hopper. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Also, yeah. <laughs> but there's this great moment where he he leaps onto Wesley Snipes' car, and because they've cut out a huge scene where the where the big reveal of the fact that the hostages that Sly Stallone was in jail for killing were actually dead already, they cut that scene out, right? So now they have to ADR the audio from that scene in. You can see that Wesley Snipes' <laughs> mouth is not moving here. Yep. <laughs> and he just, for no reason, he says, oh, you know them, them hostages that they put you in jail for killing? I had already killed them. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. Will somebody also just say out loud that Sandra Bullock is not, in fact, Stallone's daughter? It's not as problematic as it seems. Somebody just say that. I have a DNA up. test here. Uh, you and Sandra Bullock, not genetically related. So, Got it. Uh, all good. And then, so he, he bails out of the car and, and then, and then Sly Stallone smashes the car into a thing because he can't make it stop. And do they have a moment where they shit on airbags? I think they were shitting on airbags. What about this makes you guys think they were shitting on him? Because he's like, he, it's Stallone's tone here is like, <laughs> thank you. It is his tone. This, saving my life is infantilizing me. Like the, the security you. firm. Like, I, I, I need to learn how to get smashed with that. Like, thank you. He's being infantilized by like the lack of muscle cars and now by a safety device. There is an anti-security foam tone yes, absolutely. to Sly Stallone's voice at the end of this scene. Okay. Two-thirds of the podcast believes. Yeah, two-thirds of the podcast a... are trying to justify the choice of this <laughs> movie, though. Can we not sabotage this whole episode with that? Can we just like <laughs> do the show, please? Hey, I'm converted. I am converted. <laughs> you had me at Taco Bell. <laughs> So, okay, so they wander off, but of course the chief has to show up to demand his badge and gun because it's that point of, in the movie. Yes. And then Dennis Leary has to show up with his army of Mad Max extras so that they can team up. These guys will never, correct me if I'm wrong, do anything, right? No. Okay. They just have to have an army of people agree to join up with him at some point because that's in the paint by numbers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Benjamin Bratt, right? So Lieutenant Huxley... Her partner, cop, who got knocked out earlier, he's mm -hmm. part of the mole people now. Yes. Yeah. Like So that day, he got converted to a mole person. So apparently they smudge you that day. Right. You yeah. get in, and then they're like, <laughs> smudge you right up. Part of the initiation. <laughs> and he's got shoulder pads. I'll say this, though. I feel like that's realistic. I feel like you don't hang out with Dennis Leary for 45 minutes without getting smudgy. <laughs> that's true. No, that's probably <laughs> fair. Um. <laughs> So, oh, and then we have to cut back over to Wesley Snipes and Dr. Cocteau so that Dr. Cocteau can realize the, the flaw in his plan. Which is that the guys that he unfroze for Wesley Snipes can shoot him. Feel like you would have seen that coming. <laughs> you took over society after a major earthquake and stopped all murder, but you didn't think of, but what about other people shooting you? Yeah. Here. <laughs> like you could passively let the trolley run over him. Like, there's all different ways to not actively kill somebody. <laughs> right. You yeah, could not exactly. get vaccinated. There's so many ways. <laughs> but yeah, so they kill him, and this is where they see Sly Stallone showing up. So he sends his goons out after him. Yes. And, by the way, the goon does the same thing where he's got him, like, dead to rights. He leaps off of something from above him, and he yells on the way down. I'm like, that's just bad timing for your work, right? Warning man. system. <laughs> yeah. Also, for some reason, Sandra Bullock got really good at karate in between these last two scenes. She did. Yes, it, it's, it's okay, though, because she spins around a lot, so it's acceptable. <laughs> yeah. 
And also what, what we're learning here is her big turning point as a character is becoming a cop who's more violent successfully. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a win yep. for her. There's this great moment. She's like, I killed a man with my own hands. And Sly's like, yep. And she's like, I'm over it now. I was just for a minute there, though. That was really bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're going to get promoted. And she's like, it's not. We don't do that. Now. We don't. <laughs> oh, no. Trust me. We'll always do that. <laughs> we'll always do that. <laughs> Jurassic Park? Yeah. Sorry, I was going for... <laughs> I was going for Incredible Hulk, but I didn't have it. Oh. I didn't have it. So, okay. But then, of course, Sly has to knock her out because she's a lady and she can't be in the finale. Yes. Unless she's kidnapped. Sorry. Fighting and killing is man business. Yep. Exactly. I'm not sure if Nally's, sorry, I maybe killed you with this fucking <laughs> stun thing. Yeah. Yeah, right. He doesn't even know how that thing works. He's just like, oh, I sure hope they wake up eventually after you hit him with these. <laughs> And so, okay, so we cut over. Simon Phoenix is apparently unthawing all of the bad guys. They're all going to be part of his gang now. I love the idea that some of them are just tax cheats and shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really don't even know how to fire a gun, sir. <laughs> One of them is Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, I feel like he'd be a bad minion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, Jeffrey, you and two other guys. You know what? Why don't you go by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I need you to stop explaining to me that this is really about the pressure from your parents and about what... <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, you know what, Jeff? Just go wait in the frozen tank thing. Yeah. We'll get to you. We'll have you duck down. We'll freeze you later. You're going to die in a year. Really thought you were a lot more of like a rawr kind of killer. <laughs> you know, it's fine, man. No, fine. you're more of that seething... <laughs> Yeah. Also, in case you're wondering how he gets in, Sly Stallone drives the muscle car through the door that he could have just walked through. It's not okay. It, was, it wasn't like a locked gate. No. Nope. He just drove through like a curtain, super loud, right. smashing through for no reason in a car. A bead curtain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just walk in. <laughs> He's hitting the horn and it's yelling Phoenix out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him a countdown. And then. He gets out of the car and then Phoenix gets him with a giant mechanical claw. This was the best. It's he sneaks up on Sylvester Stallone with a, a mechanical, like a life size a crane. Large game. Enough, yes. Yeah. A crane game claw large enough to pick up Sylvester Stallone sneaks up. on. Doesn't him. see that coming. When he picked him up, I really wanted Sylvester Sloan to like slip out of it and then Snipes has to put in another dollar. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. That actually is caught on the ledge. Is what happens? Fuck this. I love to. This is just a, a, this is a small bit, but I have to point this out. In the background of this entire fight, they're in the like cryogenic chamber area. So there's other naked frozen people behind them. And there's one guy whose ass is framed, frozen ass is framed through this entire bit. And I asked myself during this, I'm like, is that actually a naked dude that had to lay there super still the entire time? Or did some <laughs> prop maker have to make a passable frozen asshole? Either way, someone has an awesome story from this movie. Yeah. <laughs> they tell it every day. I feel like this is an Uncle Mark prank waiting to happen. Like Uncle Mark <laughs> is going to call us. I'm like, yeah, I made that asshole. So I did. They said, fill the scene. I filled the scene. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so he gets out of the crane. They fight for a little while, and then Phoenix picks up the ice dethawing laser from before, which apparently has an Emperor Palpatine setting on it. It does. It mm -hmm. does have an Emperor Palpatine, but just for a second. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah. This is where we get the amazing I'll see you in hell not moment. Not. <laughs> it's the high point of the film. And this is where he uses the ice wand, because there's water at their feet. He uses the ice wand and jumps so the ice freezes Wesley Snipes, but not him. Right. It, it freezes everything, but only along the wave of cold as it goes around. Yeah, yeah exactly. it has to touch you. It's a flora is lava based <laughs> cryogenic space tampon. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Once again, baby Noah was ready for this activity. <laughs> He's like, I would never touch the floor when it was lava. So. <laughs> Throw Dennis Leary down there. This is the perfect movie. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my note here is like, 
how would a, even if we accept as an audience that that's how this works how would sly know that that's how it works <laughs> but then he kicks wesley snipes freezes to death and he kicks his head off and it explodes shatters and i'm like you know what i don't care i don't care how he knew <laughs> look i know the world has gotten better since 1992 in a lot of ways but we're never going to say the sentence. And then after he freezes, his head gets knocked off and it explodes, shatters again. That's just yeah. not the kind of movie we make. No, nope. we, we lost that <laughs> along the way. I, I know it's worth it. I just want to more. Basic freedom. I just <laughs> want <to> more. <laughs> also, if it freezes when it touches you, why doesn't it freeze him when he kicks him in the head? Great question. Makes no fuck. Okay. The wave, it was past. Oh, it's, well, I it's see. only during. <laughs> oh, well, then why the wouldn't metal. he just drop down into the you middle? Just, at you this just point. have to jump into the air for a second. Right. Yeah. A second. It's very quick. <laughs> Freeze frame. So, all right. So, but, but, and then of course, everything explodes because fuck the fuck. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, so he has to run out of yet another. This is the second exploding building he's had to run out of in this movie. <laughs> and then we get the brief, you know, building still smoldering in the background wrap up that basically every 90s cop movie ended on. Yeah. Where it's like Dennis Leary is going to be in charge of society now. Well, yeah, he starts to do a little more stand up and Sly cuts him off immediately. He's like, we don't have time for that shit, man. No, no. <laughs> Save that for Eli to watch almost every day after school when he's in eighth and ninth grade. <laughs> and then to reflect on in a really upsetting or troubling manner. <laughs> But I wanted them to show us this. I wanted Dennis Leary to take over the world, Los Angeles, whatever they were going for, and they cut to it. And it's just like libertarian mole people running around naked, reading porn out loud. <laughs> right, cigars, covered in like, jello. Getting bored. Yeah. Like well. they do that for a while, and then they're like, all right. <laughs> you guys want showers and food? <laughs> yeah, let's, do that, let's do that. Showers and foods. Get some banana broccoli shakes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah you get a taste. Why don't you get a taste for them? So I also love, too, that that Bob the eunuch comes out of the building and he's like, Dennis Leary, I'd like to work for you now. And I'm like, did the writers really think we needed a resolution for this character? <laughs> what the fuck happened to Gong Man? This is bullshit. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> what test audience in what mall in what right. part of America? What clip part was covered in? Where is Bob? That they were like, <laughs> All right. Yes, <laughs> we'll do those reshoots. Okay, and and then of course they go to walk off. Sandra and, and Sly go to walk off, and he th does the whole like deep dip kiss thing. And I'm like, man, if somebody moved me that quickly and I wasn't expecting it, I would vomit on them. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'd, I'd lick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the movie on kissing a woman who at least canonically is heavily implied to be your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then they ha have a quick three seashells callback because, let's face it, that was the part of that movie that was most likely to enter into pop culture legend status and, and did. And did. Speaking of which, I have this nice buffet of crow all set out here. I figured maybe I would need it later. Any takers? Phenomenal, awesome movie. I don't movie. even understand the premise. I think, that's, I think that's all yours. No, I think you can have all the crow yourself. <laughs> All right, I have I, a lot of problems in this movie. <laughs> I feel like the audience is going to be on my side here, so that's going to do it for our. This is what tears our audience apart. <laughs> we raised no, half no, a million dollars for charity. Next week, and Noah's on Rogan talking about how Demolition Man is actually <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for our review of Demolition Man, though. It's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to do a bad one for a change. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be doing another selection from the Happy Science Cult, <gasps> The Laws of the Universe Part <laughs> Zero. All right, Lovely. that's more like it. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 329 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skin, The A, The Citation, Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcast live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slightly of Dress on Mars, and all of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Boston, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Globes. Warner Brothers is working on Demolition Man 
two. That is no, real. No, we cannot be working hard enough. Eventually, the ecstasy wore off, and we realized that Rob Schneider was fucking off. Future Los Angeles went on to have a number of murders that wasn't zero in the name of freedom. <laughs> Oh, we should we should do a like a Rob Schneider movie for our Patreon bonus. Oh yes, a Schneider month. God. All right, so now we get to get a note that says, "Could you please not make any cocaine references during the mid-mobile?" No, no, mid-mobile. <laughs> That's well, the line so, I draw. What's, what's amazing is that we'll send back something that'll go like, well, we'll try. And they'll go, okay, well, that's all we can ask. That's all we can ask. <laughs> no, it's a reindeer doing coke. It's, that's not even illegal. Um, <laughs> this was my job today. Actually, you know what? We have a formula email for this one. We already, this was, yeah, we're done. Was okay. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.